Joseph is a tour consultant by profession, a role he studied to make money. In the past couple of months, however, the tourism business has faced grave challenges from COVID-19 and got him out of the white-collar job market. Today, Joseph has turned into a commercial farmer, a skill set he had acquired for a rainy day. He has successfully planted a victory Jenga garden to combat the corona effects on his job. Tonight on the show, Jenga saves the day after tourism crashes under COVID-19. Coming up on Seeds of Gold. Well, why I chose Jenga? Uh, it is because it doesn't need a lot of attention. It doesn't need a lot of presence of the farmer. It is easy. Let me say it's easy. You cannot compare Jenga with fashion fraud. Jinga is a hibiscus perennial plant that is widely used as a spice, an additive, and an alternative medicine to certain ailments. It's quite popular and easy to grow for this reason. Many grow the crop, but few think of growing a fortune garden out of it. Luckily for Joseph, this was his escape plan. This is his journey. My name is Joseph Mwondo. I'm a tour consultant by professional, but I'm a Jinga farmer. Uh, thing that I've done since 2013. Uh, well, what you need to know is tourism is seasonal and farming is also seasonal. So they don't collide. And uh, the fact that you cannot survive on one source of income, I added on this Jinga plant. And it does well for me. Uh, well, I was inspired by friends and relatives in our home village where I used to go. But uh, that was in 2012. In 2013, I started it myself with one acre. Well, why I chose Jinga? Uh, it is because it doesn't need a lot of attention. It doesn't need a lot of presence of the farmer. It is easy. Let me say it's easy. You cannot compare Jinga with passion fruit, which needs the farmer around. Jinga you plant, and then uh, you can go ahead with your other business. You only time yourself when to spray, when to weed, such things. If you take caution in those areas, you can do it, so it's not, you know, it's not giving me a hard time to maintain. I started with one acre just to see how it works out, because it was my first time. And honestly speaking, it did well. So I was inspired more. I decided to increase from one acre to, I uh, added to three acres. And uh, it was also very good. So it has always been, you know, inspiring me to add on and add on because of the, you know, the harvest and the yields. Well, in one acre, I planted four, four bags of seeds. It was around uh, 700,000 a bag. I managed to harvest, if I remember very well, it was around uh, 45, between 45 bags in that one acre. And uh, this was, you know, amazing to me. Uh, I sold them and uh, each bag I sold it was 480 honestly speaking so this inspired me to you know increase on the size of the land the source of income uh, is of course tourism because that's what uh, you know I've started and wh what I was doing so I tried to invest little of it actually in one acre it was a test one too, I should say that way. but I was so amazed Inspired by friends encouraged by the low-risk investment, Joseph took his steps into growing Jinga. Today he gladly owns a five-acre piece of vibrant Jinga garden. These are the key learnings from his experience. In the first acre, there was a lot of learning, a lot of studying because I was new in it. But uh, the advantage is there was guidance from people who are experienced in this uh, product. So I made use of them, I consulted, and that's how I managed to you know, succeed. I didn't see any 
you know, I didn't face problems in the first time because there were people who were guiding me. The only thing I can say it is putting in because I had to hire my, my land, I had to buy seeds and uh, labor. That's the only thing, you know. Uh, well, there are several things I've learned in Jinga farming, but uh, it's not so much in season what I've learned. No, it is what kind of methods are you applying? Uh, which seeds are you going to plant? There are those two main things. But the, the seeds, if you're to plant Jinga, you need seeds that have grown from one year and above. Because if it is not grown to that stage, it's not going to give you good results. It will either rot in the soil or it will not come out. So seed is a very important factor in Jinga planting. If you don't get good seeds, you will not get good harvests. And the other thing that I've seen is uh, the most important thing is starting. When you start something with guidance, you can do it well. Because as I told you, I started with one acre. I was of course kind of fearing what will happen, but there was guidance around me. Capital is a key investment for many startup farmers. Seeds, pesticides, land and labor are some of the major resources needed to start a good farm. Joseph breaks down the ease of investment on Jinga and why you should consider getting into the business. Jinga planting is affordable. The only expensive thing that I see myself is the seeds, because the seeds are expensive, you know, a bit pricey. But the rest of the things like spraying, pesticides, they are affordable. Uh, you'll find that in an acre, I will use uh, pesticides worth 60,000 to 80,000 every time I spray in an acre. And I spray twice a month. So if you look at 80,000 per time I spray, that's 160. It's affordable. Then the next spray will be in the next month. So it's not that hard. Anyone can do it. Coming up, growing, harvesting, and finding the money in Jinga. Jinga is one of the easiest plants to grow from scraps. Plant a piece of Jinga root in potting soil, make sure the buds are facing up. New shoots and roots will appear soon. It sounds that simple until the plant fails to grow. Joseph recommends following the steps to avoid the losses. Step 1. Preparing the seed. Every plant is unique in terms of how much room is needed to readily access nutrient in the ground and enough sunlight. When we are planting, we prepare the seeds. We only harvest these seeds when it's time for planting them. We don't harvest them and stock them in store, no. We get them from the, the garden. After getting them, we break them nodes by nodes because they have nodes so after we break them then we sun dry them after sun drying them like you know like if it's too much sunshine once then after you may decide to keep them in you know a cool uh, cool environment or we dig a hole where we cover these seeds from for at least one week or 10 days, cover, cover them well. Then uh, after those 10 days, they bring out the nodes. Then that's a sign that they are ready to be planted. So it takes a process to prepare the seeds themselves. Get good seeds. This is the, the biggest risk. You find that a sack of seeds costs 
at the moment 720,000 shillings, ready seeds. But you'll find another person buying jinga, which is for consumption, jinga of seven months, and tries to use it as seeds because it's cheap. That's the biggest risk. So, well, what makes the other uh, product of one year plus a seed is because it has grown fully enough. It's just like a human being. When you're young, you cannot reproduce. But when you grow old, you can reproduce. So that is the same to this plant. If you plant a jinga of seven months, it's not yet strong enough to produce more other. So that's why we have to leave it to grow at least one year plus. Why the seed is a very important thing in jinga? Because this is what is supposed to give you the mouth of other bugs. You're expecting a small piece of ginger to give you at least 5 kg. So if you don't plant the right seed, how is that possible? Step 2. Spacing. We are digging holes where, I mean, uh, holes where you, you're going to plant these ginger seeds. You space it with at least 2 or, two or 3 inches. Because in the end, what you've planted is going to expand. It's going to produce more products. So you give it enough space where it can grow. If you have planted beans, how they prepare the garden of beans, how you plant beans, the same way you plant this. The only thing here, you only put one piece in one hole. Planting stages, we do apply fertilizers. You can either use coffee husks or chicken waste. But uh, I strongly recommend coffee acids. Uh, Sometimes if, if you're using chicken waste, you have to be knowledgeable enough what kind of chicken waste. You know. it, it doesn't have to be so wet. It has to be dry. So such precautions may not, you know, other farmers may not take in of them. They'll just pour chicken waste. But coffee acids, when you buy them, you apply them. You can put them before planting or after planting. Uh, then the other thing is you give it a month after planting. That one month, you are in holiday. You're not doing anything on your farm. Jinga is a low ground growing plant, which means it will compete with the weeds for nutrients. Joseph suggests weeding as follows. After a month, then you start you know, checking it. You'll see that there are the plant is now starting to come out slowly by slowly, slowly by slowly. Then towards two months, then that's when you start weeding because that stage you will have a lot of weeds by then. And uh, when you're weeding, you, you use your hands, not the hoe at that first stage. If you use a hoe, you'll end up cutting the ones that are coming out because they'll be small and they may not be so visible. So you, that's why we advise that you use hands. Uh, then the next weeding, you will use the hope. After two months, you start spraying, because now the leaves are out, they start coming out. You start spraying twice a month. So look at these two months of maturity. You've only done the weeding. You're not spending on spraying, you're not, you're not on pressure. You start spraying from the towards the end of the second month. That's twice a month. So we look at the third month. You've done it twice a month. Uh, towards the, when you reach to the stage of six or seven months, for example here, this is uh, uh, six months. We have given up with spraying now. We are now letting it be. So you'll end up seeing that you're spraying for only five or four months in the whole season. With appropriate care and support, your jinga will be ready for uprooting. At the stage of seven months, jinga is ready for harvest. It's ready for market. That is jinga for consumption, not jinga for seeds. If you're doing jinga for seeds, you have to wait one year and above. But still, you stop on the sixth month from spraying and weeding. You let it be but you leave it in the garden for another year. 
But if you're planting jinga for consumption like tea, biscuits, sodas, etc. Six and seven months, you already have the buyers inquiring if you're selling. Then it's ready. However, sometime, if we are to follow the exact, you know, the exact uh, uh, timing, we have to let these leaves dry and let them dry off as if it's a bush. You let the weeds grow wild. Uh, that's towards the end of the seventh, seventh month. Uh, towards the end of the seventh and eighth month. Then for the seeds, it will totally dry. And when you harvest both of them, there's a difference. At this point, many farmers are asking, is there a ready market for Jinga? Jinga has really enough market. Because you, you may see, I started with one acre, kept on adding, adding. It's not only me doing it. There are other people doing it. So the more you do it, the more you get inspired to expand because there is market. First of all, Jinga is not harvested by me. The buyer comes and pays me from the farm. I'm not responsible for uh, harvesting, uprooting, pack it in the sacks and take it to town. No, they buy it from me. We sell this Jinga in different parts, especially in Kenya and Tanzania. They are the buyers of my Jinga. However, in Uganda here, it's less. It's less because they use it for tea, you know, it's not too commercial. We don't always focus on the domestic buyers. It is, ex it is taken outside of the, the country, especially Kenya and Tanzania, because for them they have machines that pound it, you know, in a better form and resell it. Yes. We've heard it from the World Health Organization that this is one of the, uh, the food they have recommended people to use during this time. So that means demand will increase. If you do it now, where, where there are less people involved, we are sure, then you are more likely to double the price because the supply will be less and the demand will be the same. Molondo defines this moment as the perfect opportunity to grow Jinga on a commercial scale. Any person who would love to start this product, this is the right time. It's, it looks like it's not the right time, but it's the right time. When all farmers are, you know, most of these other farmers are wondering whether should we start or not, that is when you should start. Uh, the fact that we've been in this, you know, pandemic, uh, many, of the, many of them have used their capital, let me say it that way. Uh, many of them are you know, wondering what next. That is when you do it. So this is the good thing of uh, not relying on one source of income. Uh, the pandemic has affected the tourism sector, which I studied, and it is down. Everyone can see. No movements, no traveling, no what. But Jinga, being a you know, an agribusiness, agribusiness, it's, it hasn't. Because during this pandemic, farmers have been allowed to move. So I was able to check on my farm, I was able to spray because even the shops for the pesticides were allowed to open. And uh, uh, luck enough, what I'm planting is needed in the general life. Joseph's vision is to invest more in the business to process the root jinga into powder so that he can make even more money from the manufacturers. COVID has affected many livelihoods and equally creates new opportunities to those ready to invest. Start today. Start now.